in this video i am reviewing some very important essential formulas from the chapter dynamics of rotational motion so starting from the first one the magnitude of the torque due to force f relative to point o this is denoted by tau we can see here this is tau is equal to f l where f is magnitude of f and l is said to be lever arm of f okay so this is equal to the r f sine of theta and r here is the magnitude of r vector from o to where force is acting on the system okay and angle theta is the angle between vector r and vector f okay this is equal to the f ten tangential force f ten is the tangential component of this force f uh, and r is again the magnitude of vector r vector from o to where f acts what is o o is the point uh, of axis of rotation through which axis of rotation is passing okay so this is the first formula that gives you the magnitude of torque by using this formula you will be able to calculate the magnitude of torque okay so you know magnitude of the torque can be expressed in three different form f l r f sin theta and f 10 r okay so let's move to the second formula which is the torque vector due to force f relative to point o it is denoted by tau this tau and given by r vector multiplication with f r cross f r is vector from point o where axis of rotation passes through to where f x and f is the force okay and the third important formula from this chapter is Newton's second law of motion for rotational motion for the rigid body. Okay, so net torque on a rigid body about z axis denoted by uh, summation tau z. This is summation tau z is equal to i alpha z where i is moment of inertia of rigid body about z axis and alpha z is angular acceleration of rigid body about z axis this is equivalent to newton's second law which is f equal to m a right so uh, in case of uh, linear motion we talk about Newton's law in terms of force and mass equal to mass times acceleration and a force you know in in uh, uh, rotational motion the force is equivalent to torque i which is moment of inertia is equivalent to mass and acceleration is equivalent to this alpha z that we call angular acceleration of the rigid body okay so let's move to the another important equation which is the kinetic energy of rigid body with both translation and rotation okay there are two kinds of motion that is taking place together kinetic energy and uh, of the rigid body so one is the kinetic energy of translation of center of mass this is the first part okay this part is the kinetic energy of translation of center of mass and the second part this one here is the kinetic energy of rotation around the axis through center of mass okay so m right here is the mass of the body and the bcm is the velocity of center of mass bcm here okay half m bcm square and plus this is the translation and this is the rotation because you know uh, rotational velocity is here okay half icm omega square where icm is moment of inertia of body about axis through center of mass and omega here is angular speed of the body 
okay let us move to the next formula and the next formula is condition for rolling without slipping so if object is rolling without slipping the speed of center of mass denoted by bcm right here is given by r multiplied by omega where r is radius of the wheel which is rotating and omega is angular speed of the wheel okay so this is very important formula when uh, the particle or wheel is rotating without slipping okay and the next formula is torque on rigid body the torque on rigid body is denoted by tau g uh, which is the net torque on a rigid body about z axis through center of mass and given by product of icm which is moment of inertia of center of mass multiplied by alpha z that is the angular acceleration of rigid body about z axis this one here is the angular acceler acceleration okay and the next formula is work done by a torque as we have studied about the work done in case of linear motion there is work done by a torque and it is this is because of the variable torque okay so we are using calculus that is work done by a torque the variable torque is denoted by w and given by integration from theta 1 which is lower limit that is initial angular position and theta 2 this one which is the upper limit or we can call it final angular position okay so this uh, is integrated t g d theta integral of the torque with respect to angle theta okay so this is for remember this is for varying torque if uh, there is a constant torque that is not changing with time then we can use another formula which is worked on by constant torque denoted by same letter w and given by uh, tau z theta 2 minus theta 1 again theta 2 is the final angular position and uh, theta 1 is initial angular position right here delta theta delta theta is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1 that is the angular displacement like a linear displacement we can call it angular displacement okay let's move to the next important formula from this chapter that is total work done on a rotating rigid body okay the total work done denoted by w tot is equal to integration from omega 1 to omega 2 i omega z d omega z which is equal to final kinetic energy angular kinetic energy minus initial angular kinetic energy right this is also said to be work energy uh, theorem we know work energy theorem in previous chapter in linear motion is w is equal to half m v final square minus minus half uh, m v initial square right it's analogous to this equation okay moving to the next equation we have here power due to torque power due to torque p is the product of tau with angular velocity tau is the torque here and the omega z is the angular velocity okay torque with respect to body is rotational axis it tau z and the omega z angular velocity of the body okay this gives you the power due to the torque and the next one is angular momentum of the particle and it is denoted by capital L this is a vector quantity and the vector product of r cross p it can be reduced in this format because we know momentum is product of mass times velocity okay 
and another equation here is angular momentum of rigid body rotating around a symmetry axis L which is equal to I omega hmm. right here I is moment of inertia of body about symmetry axis and omega is angular velocity vector of the body and next one sum of external torques the sum of the torques is given by denoted by sum tau equal to rate of change of angular uh, uh, momentum right dl divided by dt so this is rate of change of total angular momentum l of the system okay the final and very important as well the equation of conservation of angular momentum that is the if net torque acting on the system is zero so tau z is equal to zero that is the rotational equilibrium condition no external torque is acting on the system that means the initial uh, angular momentum will be equal to the final angular momentum of the system this is said to be the law of conservation of angular momentum of the system the meaning of the conservation of angular momentum uh, of the system is that the direction of rotation will not change okay so in this case i i is the initial uh, moment of inertia omega i is initial angular velocity i f is the final moment of inertia and omega f is the final uh, angular velocity okay so these are uh, 14 very important equations that we call essential equations to solve physics problems related to uh, this chapter which is dynamics of rotational body